Oh, hey. <clears throat> I uh, didn't see you there. How are you doing? What's up? You been... You've been around, you've been thinking stuff, doing things. I know how it is. Is there a version of this that doesn't look like I'm dying? Can we do that version? That's a little better. We're gonna kill the glasses for this one because the reflection is pretty crazy. All right, so let's see. I'll just click to expose there on my green shirt and you know, maybe on my forehead. Yeah, that, that seems legit. That's working, right? Is it working? Yeah, it's working. All right, so hello, orange circle. I would like to talk to you about something. This is a monologue video. It's not exactly a lay on the floor video, though we could do that maybe in the next one. I'm making a lot of videos one after another. In this one, I wanna talk about, I can't really see what I'm, I mean, it doesn't matter that I can't see, I guess. I am avoiding the topic. I want to talk about building businesses because I, uh, part of the reason that I started the whole three days, three videos a day situation, which would have been cool if I'd remembered what it was called instead of fumbling my words there. The three videos a day situation, part of the reason that I started it was to document the part of business building slash a creative journey of any kind that's not usually documented because at this point the point where I'm at right now you're filled with self-doubt and you don't know if it's gonna work out and it's usually hard to start the documenting of the project after you've started but also before you're sure it's gonna succeed a lot of projects I would imagine people start the documentation before the project and then they do some of the project and it never works out and they stop and never publish because it didn't work out or in very lucky, very rare cases, people document the entire thing. In some cases, people start documenting their journey after they're already like, they're there. You know, they've made it in some sense. And of course, that's the interesting part of the journey to document. And that's great. And I'm not saying anything bad about that. I think that's super entertaining and I would rather watch those stories anyway. So like, I'm glad that happens. However, I think it will be beneficial both personally and perhaps for other people, maybe not, but that's okay. If I talk candidly and honestly about what not knowing if your business will succeed is like, uh, especially early on in the game, like before you know, if you'll ever be able to pay yourself with your business or if it's even a good idea or any one of a number of things. So a uh, quick recap for the uninitiated. I not talking about Lander here. I do have an aerial photography business. There is a drone over there. That's all fun in games because I have a degree in photography and like I figured I should do something photo related. That is not what we're talking about in this video, though I may make a video about Lander at some point later. I think people need to know how to build a business without putting any money down or going into debt to do it or having investors. Lander is fun because that happened. Like my clients have paid for all my equipment and all my expenses and it's purely profit, the whole business. So that's fun. Uh, however, comma, neither of those, neither of the businesses are sustainable. I can't pay myself full time yet with either of them, which is worth noting. The business that I want to talk about specifically in this video is called the Abroad Academy now. It used to be called studyabroadbook.com and the name of the book was The World's Best School Travel and that was a lot of names and a lot of concepts and now it's just one online course that teaches you how to get scholarships to study abroad. It's at abroad.academy. That's it. Much easier to remember than book titles and websites and there's no more book. It's just an online course. This all started uh, a couple years ago. It's a long story. I'll tell it some other time. What you need to know now is that I have always been upset about education because I feel like the first 20 years of my life were in some sense not spent in the best way that they could be spent. When I'm angry, I say that the first 20 years of my life were wasted by people who thought they were helping me. Um, and that's not a very equitable or fair way to say it because the first 20, of my, 20 years of my life, to be completely fair, were wonderful and really pleasant and a lot of fun and like, I'm just being grumpy when I say things like that. What I mean is that 
a lot of my time in school felt like it would have been better spent me pursuing my own interests because like I'm interested in things and I enjoy learning about things on my own and so I do that naturally. Uh, the word for that is autotelic. Like when, when the learning itself is what sustains the learning, it's good. It's a good process in case you were interested in technical details. But anyway, because of that, I've always had this like righteous anger about school. Um, and the latest way that that has played out is in my building this study abroad company. If you want to put it in a one-liner, I believe that students should get paid to travel the world instead of sitting into le in lecture halls and going into debt. Again, it sounds better if I don't stutter. <laughs> but uh, that essential concept has motivated the building of this business over the course of the last two years. And that has involved all sorts of iteration and making of mistakes and pivoting and changing directions and making sure that I'm finding a product that fits the market well and that students want and benefit from and that schools can use and that it's it's a process and it's really sometimes very frustrating and other times super depressing and other times unbelievably exciting you know like don't get me wrong it's really really cool a lot of the time and that's why I keep doing it but like if it ever takes off when it takes off it will be something where I will be super tempted to only talk about the successful parts of the journey and so right now is a great time to like just be honest with myself and open so right now the online course is rebuilt the content looks great there are pictures like it's all there all the automation is already built there are email reminders and like it's really it's a cool system you sign up you get a chance to buy the online course right there otherwise you just get like emails whenever I publish a, a public free blog post uh, but if you buy the course then you get this automated five-week section of emails that walks you through all the different options you have when you study abroad, best practices for applying to scholarships, uh, sort of the, the central piece of it is persistence because a lot of schools and program providers focus on raising money and hiring people in order to get more students to study abroad. And what they don't do is just encourage students to study abroad. 80% of them already want to and then 2% of them get to just because colleges make it really, really difficult to study abroad. Either your advisors tell you no, or your parents don't think you can afford it, or your classes don't work well, and credits don't transfer. So all of those things conspire to keep students from studying abroad. And my take on it, my experience, and the interviews I've had with students and uh, customers, I guess, I would also call them students, um, Experience I've had in the study abroad world has told me that it would be a huge return investment for us to focus on encouraging students rather than trying to raise more money or trying to hire more advisors because students just need encouragement. Like, honestly, a lot of the problem is that students get discouraged. It's not because they can't afford it, and it's not because they... It's because they don't think they can, and so they don't try. So my whole business venture is focused on that one pain point. Students who don't think they can and so they don't try. It's just telling them to try again. That's the whole spiel. Um, right now, the course is rebuilt, as I mentioned, but I have been holding off on making the sales page and like finalizing the website and making it easy for people to buy the book. I think partially because I'm scared and partially because I like, I want it to be in process for a long time because I, always think of like revisions or like something I want to change or like I took a year basically off from selling it just to network in the industry like just to the industry the field I mean it's not really big enough to call it an industry I know that now thanks to all the networking I did in the field uh, and now I have a ton of connections and I'm really excited about like going forward where I'll be posting blog posts and who I'll be talking to and what companies I'll be collaborating with and like it's all really exciting. I'm just at a place where I need to finish the website and it's not even a ton of work. Like I've built entire websites in single days before, which I really should have made videos about, but I was busy building websites. That was just last week. Um, and for some reason I can't finish my own but I have to within the next two days. So that's why I'm making this video now because I want to capture this moment where I'm still avoiding what I need to do 
because sometimes you're crazy. Like sometimes even when you're building your own business and you're excited about it and you're genuinely enthusiastic about getting things going and moving and running and progress and building and blah, you know, all the entrepreneurial things that people always scream about. Even when that happens, sometimes you self-sabotage. Sometimes you suck. Sometimes you're not honest with yourself. Sometimes you're depressed and you're lying to yourself about the quality of the work you've done or the importance of the work you're done, you've done, or even if it's necessary. Like, I tell myself all the time, even while making this video, this kind of sounds crazy, like maybe you shouldn't do it, maybe it's not really needed. Like, if this were really a thing and you could just encourage students and then they would study abroad, wouldn't it have been done already? Now, I know in my heart that those things aren't true. Like, I know why it hasn't been done already. I know that, in fact, it has been done already. It's just follow through is a huge issue. It's been done several times, what I'm doing. It's just never been followed through with. People will do this every couple of years in the study abroad world, and then they'll give up on it um, because of a variety of things, like inability to connect with other companies in the industry, networking issues, marketing issues. Marketing is everyone's problem, if we're honest. So anyway, I'm not going to quit because you, you know why, because I believe students should travel and not sit in lecture halls and go into debt because how could that not make the world better? Can you imagine that if it were like just standard that students all over the world traveled to each other's countries as part of their growing up experience? Like how much more interconnected and cool would that make the world? I think it would be great. And I, that's something I'm genuinely excited about. And that's something that I care about building a business around. And so I'm not going to quit. I'm going to figure out every marketing issue and every networking issue and every thing I'm wrong about about my own business and I know there are things I'm wrong about and assumptions I'm making and things I'm doing wrong but I'm gonna fix all of those until it works because I want students to travel students want to travel I just want to help them like it doesn't matter what I want other than helping people do what they want I think that's my spiel I think I'm all I don't, I don't have anything else to say. That was 12 minutes long. If you listen to this whole thing, wow, thank you. Uh, I hope that was encouraging. There's just a ton of self-doubt. Even, even just in talking about this, like I'm worried, oh, you know, what if some other study abroad professional sees this? What if they don't? But that's why people don't document these things, is doubts like that, self-doubt. But this is important. Like it, it is important for people to know that when you're building your business and things don't seem like they're going to just take off and rocket into epic success, you know, it never, it never seems that way. And, and so the story doesn't get told often enough. I wanted to be here to tell whatever story this becomes. I'm in it for the long haul. And so I want to make sure that I'm telling the story as I go, because I know, looking back, I'm going to wish I did if I don't. So I'm gonna. And this is part of that. So thank you for listening to this video. It's been real. I'll end it there.